Media, Associated Media Publishing, one of South Africa's most powerful independent media houses, announced it will be shutting its doors permanently. Joining us now to discuss whether this is the beginning of the end for publishing is Director of Media Monitoring Africa, William Bird. William, it's good to have you with us. Certainly, the industry or the magazine space has been changing as i mentioned the digital platforms that were coming up social media certainly eating into uh, that circulation but 10 magazines shutting down in just one week is there something a little bit more that is going on here that is underlying uh, good afternoon yes certainly i think you know in the same way as we're expecting our economy to effectively you know come to a stand complete stand so to, for millions of people to lose their jobs we can expect a similar kind of knock-on effect to the media sector and this is really these are the first casualties of this war against this virus you know they the their models were were precarious to begin with and they were declining and this is really just dealt with uh, you know a deadly set of blows and it just is no longer sustainable. It doesn't mean it's the end of publishing per se, but it does mean that this era of those kinds of magazines, I think, has come to an end. Now, talk to me about that link uh, with uh, the uh, advertising spend and, of course, the broader economy and how that impacts on uh, magazine publications. So I think that, the, you know, the still link is, is that most of the companies aren't allowed to operate so that they have no reason to be advertising. You know, it's pointless to be advertising your product in, <clears throat> in media if, if you can't, if people can't go out and purchase your product. So th that's the first thing. You know, there's a significant decline in, uh, in advertising revenue. <clears throat> the second thing, of course, is that the digital models that are there and that people have been trying are, <clears throat> excuse me, are just not sustainable. If you look at the the, the, the the revenue that they generate, it's nowhere near the kind of revenue that they need to make their businesses uh, healthy successes. Over the last uh, you know decade or so, we've seen increasingly entities like Facebook and and, and Google taking away over 85 percent of digital revenue. So, you know, they really is 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 a very difficult model to find that works. Of course, there are a few exceptions to this, um, and a lot of media are going to have to try and find those. The danger is, of course, that you know, whenever you shut these things down, you're shutting down a diversity of information and the plurality of media, and that's always a bad thing for democracy. So it's not just a bad thing for the media houses and for those uh, employees who work there. It's a, it's a bad thing for our nation uh, and our ability to think and share ideas. Uh, but William, we've also seen a major downscaling of activities from, from other news publications as well. I mean, yeah, we saw the closing down of the Huffington Post, Tiso Blackstar saying they'll be discontinuing Sunday World, uh, they're cutting salaries. Uh, we've seen uh, Dr. Igbo Server also saying he'll be cutting salaries, although he is, of course, maintaining some of the jobs uh, uh, at, 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 at his uh, media house. Uh, is the content in danger here somewhat uh, of, 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 of being maybe low quality? as well. So I think that that's certainly the case in some instances. You know, some uh, products, they just produce rubbish and people stop buying them. But I think the, the general business of, of news and journalism, which is different to kind of uh, the magazine things that we initially started with, that is a very hard thing to actually generate revenue from. And, and that fundamentally what we're having to do is, is make a, a critical shift away from this idea of Journalism is something that makes money, and journalism is a public good. Newsroom Africa, I very much doubt, is, a, is able to be a sustainable entity, particularly in this uh, current economic climate. But it's critical because it offers a fresh and different perspective to what's happening in South Africa. And so if it were to fail because of that, it would be a complete and utter tragedy. So we need to then say, well, where are they meant to be getting their, their resources from? Because the role that they're fulfilling isn't just something that's offering a useful product or something that people like. It's offering something that's important for the functioning of democracy. So in as much as we might begrudge Parliament, for example, costing us a lot of money, no one's saying, hang on a minute, we shouldn't have Parliament because it costs us money. And it's the same thing with media. You know, you need media because they, 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 they share ideas, they help us understand who we are, they share our identity. Imagine if we didn't have all the local content programs that we have. So some of them you can make money from, but it's a, it, it's a complex picture, and I think that we're still busy trying to find models that, that, that might work, and we have to find different revenue streams critically.
And let's talk about that. You mentioned earlier on it's Facebook and Google versus newsrooms. Are newsrooms able to change their models fast enough to be able to monetize online news? Well, they can, but they, they, they're really struggling, the majority of them, to find an online model that works. And, of course, there are exceptions. Daily Maverick is one that's been a, a digital product since it was born, effectively. And they are, you know, they, they, they've been expanding. They're one of the few success stories over the last uh, decade in South Africa and, indeed, around the world. You know, their models are, are, are being studied by a number of media, not just locally, but internationally. So they've obviously got something that they're doing. Part of it's about a membership revenue. Part of it's about, uh, you know, using donor funding to, to sustain other elements. And, and I guess that that's what we can have to look at, the idea and the, and the notion that you can then rely on a, on a couple of big advertising and a lot of advertising to do it is, is incredibly sustainable. But we equally have to look and say, well, hang on a minute, what is the role of these social media platforms? Some countries are saying, well, we need to tax them. So in Australia, that's what they're looking at doing. Uh, at taxing them as a way of generating revenue to help media be more sustainable. And that's something that we, we might have to look at in South Africa as an example of saying, well, where, where are these resources going to be coming from? Because we can't say, okay, government, give us the money. You know, that, that may work to a degree if you get public funding or something like the public broadcaster, but it certainly isn't a, a, a solution for all of our media. We've got small commercial media operating around the country where you've got people that are producing fundamentally critical news for smaller communities. If they disappear, who's going to be telling those stories? And it's not like they can just shift onto digital. Digital is, you know, you can do a million more things with digital than you can with print, but it has other, you know, high costs. You need data people, you need people that are able to design and run websites and do all sorts of other clever things. So it's not like it's just a, a, a TV switch and then they should be making money. And the, critical, and the biggest element, of course, is your people. You have to make sure that you've got money to pay journalists to produce quality stories. And what we've seen globally is that, that the number of journalists have been declining, and with that you've seen a concomitant decline broadly of the quality of, of, of journalism around the world. And, and that is to peril. You know, without media now, telling us what's happening around the COVID crisis, sure, government could tell us some of it, but without media, we wouldn't know about the, 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 you know, some of the officials stealing food costs. We wouldn't know about some of the other issues that are arising that our media have been telling us. So they, they are absolutely essential to uh, uh, the functioning of our democracy. What also has been essential, uh, 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 William, of the function of magazines is that in recent times we've seen news publications particularly uh, putting up uh, events, live events, which have certainly been, been helpful uh, to uh, bring in much in needed uh, cash injection and income into those publications. With lockdown, we are seeing, of course, no movement whatsoever and those events not actually happening. And the likelihood is that, you know, uh, it's going to take at least another 18 months before people are comfortable enough to be back inside big halls and rooms and, and, and gathering. Uh, what would uh, these publications need to do at that point? You know, to be honest, I don't know. And I think that they're facing that broad question. I, I, I'm worried that uh, publications like the Mail and Guardian are going to disappear. Uh, you know, and that would be, again, another tragedy for our sector. And like what they produce a lot, it's, it, it's, a, it's an essential voice for uh, our democratic space. So, you know, events have been one of the things that many media entities globally have been turning to in order to bring in different revenue. Uh, you know, they've been doing other kinds of programs. Some magazines are lucky because they speak to a very niche audience and that they know that they offer that product in a way that really, really uh, speak to them. So I suspect that we'll start to see um, a few more very niche uh, publications, very niche kind of uh, media but that a lot of the ones that are, are generalists and that attempt to speak to a greater diversity of audiences, they really are the struggle, you know. We've seen, you've mentioned the Daily Maverick uh, as one of the digital platforms that, of course, has been very successful. But there have been other new uh, digital platforms that have emerged with COVID-19. Are they likely to uh, readjust their models as well? And probably with all the other magazines shutting down, they would have uh, probably a, a, a bigger footprint to cover. Well, you know, they 
might. And you might see some stories arising from that. So I know that there's an excellent, and the name just escapes me, there's, there's a farming uh, website, and they tell, they tell stories about farmers in urban places, in urban areas, you know, saying as much as we're losing farmers weekly, there's already another website that's telling these stories in ways that is really already quite riveting for people. And they are incredible stories of urban agriculture and urban farming, and they offer a different perspective. And, you know, so you're seeing things that uh, people do that are really bright and innovative. So I don't think it's the end of uh, journalism by a long stretch, but I think that it is the end of a lot of the media that we know, and unless they can reinvent themselves in a way that's supposed to be, I'm not sure that many of them are going to survive this particular uh, period.